Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV. On this week's episode, I'm going to share with you reasons why dealers in the U.S. are shipping Canadian-made vehicles across the border and selling them to you. And I'm also going to point out something you should keep in mind if you're considering buying one. So stick around. Hey, welcome to Cheaper Jeeper TV, the show that helps you get the most for your money so that you get the most for your Jeep. I'm Dino, your host, glad to see you here. In this video, when I make a few points, if there's any documentation or links that I have that can provide you more details if you wanted to investigate it further, I'll have a number come up on the screen and that number will indicate which link it is in the description section to help you out. Now, this issue about American dealerships or car brokers bringing cars across the border to sell in the U.S. got my attention when a friend of mine was trading in his Wrangler JL with a few kilometers on it to upgrade to a Gladiator JT. And why wouldn't you? I mean, if you're into overlanding and camping, you could really kit out your Jeep Gladiator with something like a Rover King camper, for example. And that was all fine, but what got my attention was when I saw a Facebook post that explained his vehicle was being shipped to a dealer in the US. That's where I thought to myself, well, I guess it's economically feasible to ship a Canadian vehicle across the border and sell it to somebody in the US. And there's articles out there that explain that our MSRP is slightly less than in the US, uh, the exchange rate, and how the shortage of chips on options in vehicles makes getting a vehicle that has tons of options a little bit scarce. So if a dealer sees one in Canada, it might be worth shipping across the border. But that's not why I made this video. It wasn't until I saw a comment made by one of my viewers in the Corrosion FCA class action lawsuit video that I made that got my attention. His comment shared that he bought one of these vehicles. It was a Canadian vehicle on the lot had a few thousand kilometers on it and he assumed as I would have as possibly you might have that if there was kilometers left on the warranty he was buying a vehicle that still had the comprehensive warranty the powertrain warranty but after he brought his Jeep in for some corrosion warranty repair he learned that that vehicle does not come with a warranty simply because it crossed the border. Now there's articles that give reasons why manufacturers won't honor their warranty on their vehicle. Um, you could look at them further, but that feels a little bit cheesy to me. And also the fact that the dealer didn't mention it. I think it's reasonable to assume when you buy a car off of the dealership lot that if there's only a few thousand kilometers on it, that it would have the remainder of the warranty on it. And I think it would be an ethical practice as a dealer to make sure that the buyer understands that there's this loophole to the warranty on their vehicles that they ship across the border. But they didn't for this viewer and now he does not have any warranty whatsoever. So similar to the information about the corrosion issue on FCA vehicles that they've been dealing with on cars as old as 2013, this information I thought should be out there too. I'm not trying to be negative or anything like that. I just want to share this information so viewers like you or maybe you might know friends who are looking at purchasing a vehicle, not just a Jeep, but any vehicle that's from across the border, they should be aware if they're expecting the warranty comes with that vehicle, well, they should investigate it further because according to the comments of my viewer and some articles, the warranty doesn't come with the vehicle across the border. So as cheesy a practice as it seems to me on behalf of the manufacturer and the dealers, this is definitely a case of buyer beware. So I hope that this video made you aware. And if you have friends in your Jeep club who are considering buying a Jeep, they may want to be made aware of this situation. So now let's move on to our tip segment. Now for some cheaper Jeeper tips. Although the content in the main segment of this video applies to most vehicles in general, I have included Jeep specific content under the tips segment in the description section with links to forum threads from Wrangler forums so you could check out some experiences from Jeep owners just like you. I hope you find it helpful. So now let's hear what our subscribers have to say. And now for subscribers tips. It was great to hear back from some subscribers who'd won prizes in a 10,000 subscriber giveaway draw. 
Here's a picture of the first place winner with the 23 quart Bouge RV fridge that he won here in his Jeep along with his co-pilot Nibbles. Thanks for sending in the picture, Vince. And here's the second prize winner, Les. Seems that he's camping out on the East Coast and he has his Cheaper Jeeper TV coffee mug while he's making a slow drip coffee camping on the East Coast, perhaps. Thank you both for sending in the picture in the video. We'll have to do this again maybe at 20,000 subscribers. Hey, that's it for this week's episode of Cheaper Jeeper TV. I hope that you found it helpful, and if you know somebody who might also find it helpful, feel free to share it with them. And if you like the video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the alert bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes out. Until the next time, I'm Dino for Cheaper Jeeper TV. Be well, stay safe, take care.